Hello and welcome to the second video in a series of videos that accompanies my low register long tone exercises worksheet. You can find the link for that worksheet in the description of this video. In the last video I gave an introduction to this series and also some pointers of how to approach the first exercise on this worksheet. It was quite a long video, it was about 12 to 13 minutes I think and hopefully this video will be slightly shorter because I'm just going to be working on the exercise. So if you've downloaded the worksheet or you've printed it off or something, great, have a look at it. Today we're going to be looking at exercise two and some of the things to think about when we're looking at it. All this exercise is, is a very slow chromatic descent from a B flat, that's the uh, sort of uh, the top end of the low register B flat, so. Um, we're starting on that B flat and then we're just playing that for six beats on, two beats off, and then we're descending chromatically to an A, six beats on, two beats off, and then descending to an A flat. Again, six beats on, two beats off, and then four beats on, on a G. So it's really important to have a metronome to do this, and it's also important to have a tuner just to make sure everything is in tune and your intonation isn't sort of uh, going a bit haywire. So I'm just gonna double check I'm in tune. So I'm actually very sharp there. So I'm just going to pull out off the cork a little bit. Still slightly sharp, so I'm just going to pull the mouthpiece slightly further off again. So my G is slightly sharp there, but that's something that I just need to, I need to learn where the position is for that particular note. So it's a chromatic descent. It's very straightforward in terms of finger work, that kind of thing. It's quite slow, which is not too much trouble. The one thing you will note is that I've been very prescriptive with the dynamic markings. So we're starting at MP, and then we're crescendoing through the first note to a forte, and then we're starting the next note at forte and diminuendoing to MP, and then starting the next note at MP, crescendoing to a forte, and then on the last note, starting on a forte and diminuending diminuendoing to a, a piano marking. I've written piano there, but actually feel free to go as quiet as you can. If you can get to pianissimo or pianissimo, that would be great. Um, it just really helps you sort of develop tuning control and tone control through sort of a change in dynamic. So this is how the exercise goes. So you will notice that in terms of dynamic change, the sound of the saxophone does also change quite a lot as well. At the quieter dynamics, you can have quite a sort of muted, um, covered sort of tone quality. It's quite a dark sound, but I find that as you get louder and louder, the higher partials of the sound, the higher harmonics start to come to the front. So you might find that it becomes quite buzzy. So on a B flat. And some people don't like that sound. If you don't like that sound, you have to try and adjust out of it. You have to try and keep your top lip down quite hard and try and keep it quite a dark sound at those louder dynamics. I find it quite hard to do, I'll be entirely honest. But also I think that in a way, I would encourage you to embrace that kind of sound, that bright buzziness. Um, because after all, you're playing a saxophone, you know, you're not playing a flute, you're not playing a clarinet. People who compose stuff for the saxophone will inevitably want a little bit of that brightness, a li little bit of the sort of shimmer over the top of the sound. And also if you're playing, for example, a concerto where you've got a full orchestra behind you, 
having that brightness will also help you sort of soar above the sound of the orchestra, especially if you're doing soloistic stuff. Having a bit of edge to the sound just helps it cut through all the accompaniment and stuff. So it can be really helpful to embrace that kind of sound. The other thing, I think the thing that's really tricky with this, again, similar to the previous long tone exercises, is the starts and the ends of the notes, especially at the extreme dynamics. Starting forte on an A can be quite hard. If your tongue isn't in the right position, you might get some squeaking or something at the start of the note, which can be sort of quite ugly and, and quite unpleasant, really. Um, so you really need to try and, even though you've got those two beats rest between each long tone, it's really important to try and maintain your embouchure. And for this, I do recommend, if you've not got a blocked nose, which I currently have, it's uh, really hard to breathe through my nose at the moment, um, if you can breathe through your nose and not move your embouchure, between the, between the long tones. So if I go from a B flat to an A. I messed that up a little bit. I started piano on that entry on the G. But if you can try and keep your embouchure as similar as possible between the notes, that will help you get those entries nice and clean and hopefully well in time. The other thing that is really difficult is to get the openings of those notes to really sound good at the quieter um, markings. So the A flat, for example. There, I would recommend, if you can, not to actually use your tongue to start the note, but just use the air. So it's more of a, uh, so it's not a, ta, it's like a, uh, as if you, if you whisper, ah, 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 you can feel the vocal folds just opening just to let the air through at the very start of that. And it's a similar sort of feeling when you're starting, I find that those lower dynamics are quiet quiet dynamics. It's really helpful to think of that to sort of kick start the air and get the reed going without having to touch the reed at all with your tongue. So this is, I'm not using my tongue at all in this, I'm just starting on the air. That's quite an advanced technique, so um, for beginners that might be quite troublesome. If you're struggling with that, just sort of just feel like you're just breathing out through the instrument. You're likely to get some squeaks, uh, and sometimes the note won't sound immediately, and that's just something that I think you should really work on. Um, just the start of those notes, getting them really crisp and clean, but at a very nice dynamic and a really nice tone. Another thing that might be quite helpful for this exercise, just to give it some variety, is to change the dynamics around. So starting loud on the B flat, going quiet, starting the A quiet and going louder, and then starting loud on the A flat, going quieter, and then starting on the G quiet, and then getting as loud as you can to finish. So I think that covers everything. If you've got any problems or any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions on additions or uh, how should I say it sort of any revisions of these exercises again leave it in the comments I'm hoping to update these PDFs as I go along so this isn't the finished article and hopefully you know between me putting them out there and you guys giving some feedback hopefully we can put together a, a saxophone resource that's really helpful really detailed and a really thorough sort of walkthrough of playing this instrument so I hope you enjoyed, I hope it was helpful. If you did like the video, please give it a like, subscribe, of course leave any comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.